Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Big Crit mixtape free album collection of tracks thing, a king or, 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 or king remembered in time. Big Crit is a Mississippi rapper and producer known for his very personal lyrics, detailed southern fried beats, catchy hooks, and versatility. These strengths of his have given him a lot of visibility, a lot of exposure outside of the Mississippi area over the past few years. With his breakthrough mixtapes, Crit was here, as well as Return of Forever, and his Forever in a Day free mixtape slash kind of concept album, as well as his full-length commercial debut live from the underground on Def Jam Records, which actually made it to number one on the charts, which was a pretty big step up for Big Crit, at least in terms of music industry noticeability. He had some pretty large features and ambitious features on this LP featuring people like B.B. King as well as 2 Chains. And this bigger budget definitely showed up in Crit's production as well with guest singers, horns, guitars, very smooth, soulful music samples. Though it is easily my least favorite of his recent projects, still Crit proved to me that he could put out a big budget album on a major record label, but still come out with a series of tracks that didn't cheapen his style, his direction, or just his sound in general. And maybe that partially has to do with the interesting position that Big Crit is in in the world of hip hop right now. He's one of the few MCs that is so versatile, he can put together banging, catchy, very hook heavy singles, but also turn around and do something that's really emotive or vulnerable, personal, socially conscious as well. The fact that he can wear many different hats as he is making songs and not sound like a fool when he's doing one or the other is a big help to him. And it's the guy's rapping style and his production that sort of adds this very solid bass underneath every narrative he tries to string together on a given LP that brings the consistency that I guess sort of makes it all believable. When it comes to changing the sound of his rapping or his production style, Crit is very much about slow and steady wins the race. However, as Crit has continued to release music, it seems like maybe a little bit more and more he is recycling and reframing a lot of the catchphrases that he uses in previous tracks, song topics and themes, euphemisms, flows when he's rapping as well as maybe grooves and, and synth lines in his beats. And looking back on all of Big Crit's recent albums now, it's become kind of apparent that many of his full lengths flow in roughly the same way. And Crit pretty much carries that redundancy onto this new LP as well. Because between a lot of the tracks here, he rounds many, many familiar bases in terms of song themes and where certain songs of certain emotions are placed at certain points in the album. For one, on this LP, there's the track King Without a Crown, which is very hard hard hitting. Essentially, it is a personal determination anthem of which there are a lot of that pop up at the beginning of Crit's full lengths. However, this one is incredibly well done and there's no reason to sort of throw it away just because there are a few songs out there right now that may be sort of telling the same story as it, but this version being a little more updated because Crit right now is at a different part in his career than he was two or three albums ago. On this track, he does manage to rehash some lines that have appeared on previous releases like, what's a king without a crown? What's a car without some sound? And I'm not sure if I was totally feeling the line, splitting the peach, fruit ninja. The song Shine On is sort of a hard grooving but slow and chilled kickoff of the album, which Crit has definitely done before. And the vibe that the song Meditate goes for as well will be familiar to Crit fans. It is a slow burner where Crit's singing vocals are right at the forefront, although this, is, in my opinion, is definitely one of the best songs that he has done in this angle because of how melodic and detailed the beat is. I love the guitar on this track as well as the jazz vibraphone. Very pretty. I also like the lyrical angle that this track takes with just vices. Crit has some other interesting messages on this LP as well. Later in the album, where typically the more highfalutin deep tracks are placed, the song Banana Clip Theory is an interesting track about somebody who 
has a gun for protection mostly, but of course there comes a time where he acts irresponsibly with it, and then he's dealing with sort of the aftermath and the regret that can come with making the mistake of pulling the trigger at the wrong time, or at the wrong person, or just for the wrong reason. The song Multi Till the Sun Die is another one of these tracks right at the end of the album where Crit kind of checks his mental state, his status in music, his personal life, and this is really one of the most epic tracks that he has done in this vein yet. A lot of these songs, especially ones like The Vent, tend to be very sort of sad and introspective. This one just as introspective, but really sort of triumphant, and it should be, considering where Crit is right now in his career. No. Nice work on the sample there, too. Even though there are times where Crit sort of approaches structuring an album like doing a Mad Lib or something. Okay, we need something sad in this slot. We need something upbeat in this slot. He does manage to put himself into some interesting situations on this album, like with the song R.E.M., which very successfully, I will say, samples the James Blake song, The Wilhelm Scream. He flips this sample perfectly, and he does it in a way that doesn't feel too cheesy or in a way that is just sort of hamming up the James Blake sample a little bit too much. He raps over this sample very well, he chops parts of it and adds pianos, keyboards to make some really nice verses for the instrumental, and this is just another track where Crit seems to be getting kind of personal, very personal, where his dreams really sort of fueled a lot of passion in him. On previous tracks, he really takes this Blake sample and, and creates a theme where he seems to sort of fear his dreams or be doubtful about them right now, especially with the line on this track where he feels like he has sort of disappointed fans with his recent output, considering how some of the reactions to Live from the Underground were sort of negative. The song Serve This Royalty is essentially a love song for Crit, which isn't the first time he's done something like this, but not quite so much in this angle or with this sort of passion. On this track, he really seems to be desperately sort of looking for some kind of companionship throwing in all of this imagery of kings and royalty in there with the storyline, and he manages to sample a Cody Chestnut track, which was recently sampled by the Underachievers on their Indigoism mixtape. I have to say at the end of the day, Underachievers did the sample more justice, adding some more interesting drums, but they both roughly go about pulling this track apart in a lot of the same ways. It just happens that Chris sampled a completely different vocal part from the song and built his narrative around that. The song Good Together is another surprise from Crit. It's sort of another love song and has a very nice vocal contribution from Ashton Jones. And what makes this song so surprising is how just upbeat and just bright and flamboyant it is. It's a really kind of peppy neo soul track with just very dynamic vocals jumping all over the place. It feels sort of like a Janelle Monae song. Janelle, I think, would have pushed it into maybe slightly more eccentric territory, whereas when Crit's doing it on this track, it feels maybe just slightly a little hokey. Now, the final five tracks on this LP are incredibly solid. Some of Crit's best material to come toward the end of an album. The song What the Fuck is really one of his most intense lyrical endeavors yet. Yet. His flow and his delivery on this track is fantastic. And the song Life is a Gamble is an interesting track where Crit is really sort of dealing with people taking gambles with their lives, trying to get ahead, weighing the risks, and, and dealing with the sadness of seeing people have to go because of the choices that they've made. And surprisingly, he raps over a Ninth Wonder beat on this song. It's the middle of this LP where things run really thin in terms of fresh or interesting ideas. The middle of this LP is some of Crit's weakest, weakest, straightforward stuff. The song Just Last Week, which features Future, and, and that feature alone is enough to get some big Crit fans freaking out. It's oh, such a letdown. Crit's flow on this track is incredibly dumbed down. The beat is really, really basic and doesn't even have an interesting sample. And the lyrics are incredibly below Crit's potential. And the thing is, Future isn't even the worst thing about this song. His presence isn't even really strong on this track. And I don't know why Crit didn't want to flesh this song out. It says Just Last Week featuring Future Snippet in the title. It's almost as if midway through the song, Crit realized it was a bad idea and just stopped, but wanted to put it on the album anyway. The song My Trunk, while it's not my sub part 
three, it kind of feels like it. It has a roaring guitar in it and a pretty detailed beat, but again, I'm getting more lyrics that are sort of below Crit's potential. This song feels too samey samey, like other tracks I've heard from him already, and the Trinidad James feature is just not saving the track either. The song essentially kind of feels like reheated leftovers, as well as the song Only One that has Smoke Dizza and Wiz Khalifa on it. The beat sort of reminds me of the song Time Machine, and there are some pretty corny lyrics on this track too, like with Wiz Khalifa sticking to his cheese like a microwave, and Big Crit actually getting me to sort of turn the gears in my mind about the inner workings of a squirter, <laughs> which is something I think Danny Brown would have done a line about way better. The song How You Love That feels kind of below Crit's potential too in terms of production and lyrics. There's just a serious dry spot in the middle of this album that gets me down. Overall though, this is still just a handful of tracks. The beginning the beginning of this album is relatively solid. The end is fantastic. This album is really enjoyable. Crit does put his heart on his sleeve on a lot of these tracks. Again, he brings great production, but the structure that he approaches building albums with is getting a little stale, and some of the song concepts that he does can be a little too referential or just obvious rehashes of previously produced songs at times. Though I do like this album a little bit more than Live from the Underground, I do think Crit was kind of resting on his laurels on this LP and not really pushing himself as consistently as he has on previous projects. I do know Crit is more creative than this and I'm going to look forward to seeing that creativity flourish a little bit more on future projects. I'm feeling a light to decent seven on this thing. If you've given it a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? Anthony Fantano, Big Crit, forever.